Hey, good top of the morning to you. Old school preaching, VHS level. Anyway, guys, we're in the book of Revelation, chapter 19, uh, verse 2 through 4. I went to the doc my eye doctor. They prescribed me a 1.25, so my eyes are getting a little worse. I can still see pretty good, just like I can't see like right in front of me. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you're having a great day. Um, chapter 19, verse 2 through 4 says... For true and righteous are your his judgments, for he has judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. And again they said, Hallelujah, for her smoke rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshipped God, who sat on the throne, saying, Amen, Hallelujah. I gotta learn how to not steam up glasses. I think I have spray. But anyway, guys, um, you know there 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 is a great whore on this earth right now. The Bible calls calls tells you it's a city in 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 Rome, okay, and its main goal is to throw a monkey wrench in the plans of God. So it brings in traditions of men. It brings in you know. Apostate Christianity, or you want to call it churchianity. Um, they have a form of godliness, but deny the power. But also, because of church history, we know that the Catholic Church during, during the Inquisition killed a lot of Christians uh, because they, they would tell them that salvation was a free gift. Um, Martin Luther would say that, you know, faith, you know, faith, faith in God, you know, Redeemed, redeemed by the blood, um, justified by faith. Uh, that was that was the main tenet: justification by faith. Um, and this enemy, the Bible calls the whore. Um, you know, led a lot of people to their deaths. A lot of Christians died because of of you know. You would think God would judge this church when it happened or right away. But the Lord says that he allows the, the cup of his judgment to fill. And Pastor McGee says this, It is interesting to note that at the conclusion of all these judgments, those in heaven who have more perfect knowledge than you and I are able to say that God's judgments are true and right. If you don't think that God is doing is right, it is because you, not God, are wrong. You thinking is incomplete. Of course, as mine is also, God will be righteous in judging the great harlot. This is interesting because when we read the judgment of the great harlot, representing the apostate church, which went into the tribulation, it says that the kings of the earth and the Antichrist destroyed the harlot. Yet here we are told that it is God who judged it. You see, God uses di different instruments, and he will use the devil to accomplish his purpose also. Those in heaven are saying, True and righteous are thy judgments, because the apostate church deserved to be destroyed, and it had made martyrs of many of God's children. Many of God's children, you know. I don't really tell too many Catholics. I attack them. I don't. Know, it's not even attacking them. You're just warning them. You're telling them about you know the Queen of Heaven and other gods. But most people get upset, and some people are just going to get mad at you. And all you're trying to do is like, hey, check this out. You know, I know you believe in God, but you know, you lead them towards what God's Word says, and sometimes uh, that goes contrary to what their church they've been taught at the Catholic Church. Remember, God is still in the Catholic Church until the rapture happens, but then the apostate church joins forces with the beast of Revelation and the false prophet, and they bring in all all false religions. They bring them together. Uh, and again, um, you got to remember that this this whore, or the Bible calls a city, it's a, you know the harlot is a city, um, killed a lot of Christians. We, we know at the beginning of seventy A.D. A lot of Christians were, were, were destroyed and sent to the lions and killed and martyred. And it, it kept growing and growing and growing 
until it, it, it imploded. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the, the persecution of the early Christians were very much true. In this verse, we find the picture of the church in heaven saying hallelujah. They say it twice. Why? As long as the imposter of the true church, the great harlot, is on the earth, the marriage of the Lamb will not take place in heaven. The anti-church is disposed of first, which makes way for the marriage of the Lamb. I assume that the marriage of the Lamb takes place in heaven sometimes during the midst of the tribulation, which is going upon the earth. He has avenged the blood of his servants at her hand. You see, believers are forbidden to avenge themselves. It is true that some of us try to do it, but the moment we do so, we forsake the walk of faith. In Romans chapter 12, verse 19, God says to us, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, and I will repay, says the Lord. You know, God will take care of the vengeance for you. Also, too, the Bible says if you live by the sword, you're going to die by the sword. So if you're in the tribulation hour and some crazy guys, could be your family members, want to fight the new world order with guns, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and dominions of the dark forces. You know, don't, don't take vengeance upon yourself. The Antichrist and the false prophet are thrown alive into the lake of fire. Um, if you think about it, the false prophet, you can't kill him. I think he's, I think the false prophet is going to be immortal. Because he never dies. He never receives the, the, the beast of Revelation gets a mortal head wound. That means he dies and comes back to life. But the false prophet never dies. So he is, uh, whoever this false prophet is going to be, whoever is leading the worship towards you know the beast of Revelation and sets up an image and tells the people to worship it, he's immortal in a sense. Because you can't kill him. Because both of them are thrown alive into the lake of fire. And then nowhere in the Bible does it say that the false prophet gets a wound or dies. We know that the false prophet and the beast of Revelation and the ten kings turn against, turn against, um, turn against the uh, the harlot. But again, we know that Pastor McGee is saying here that the wedding of the Lord doesn't take place until after she is destroyed. Um, he has avenged the blood of the servants at her hand. You see, believers are forbidden to avenge themselves. Uh, again, maybe this is the God of the Holy Spirit telling me, telling, saying it twice to you, tribulation saints. Uh, don't avenge yourselves. It is true that some of us try to do it. But the moment we do so, we forsake the walk of faith. In Romans chapter 12, verse 19, God says to us, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. God will take care of the vengeance for you. If you have been injured, as many of us have been, we want to hit back. That is natural. It is the old nature striking out. However, we are in, to turn that department over to God. He doesn't intend to let every, anyone get away with the wrongs, for vengeance is his, and he will bring judgment on the apostate system. Again, guys, and then the 24 elders, for the first time, sing hallelujah. The elders we believe to be the church, Reve Revelation chapter 12. This is the last time the elders appeared as much as such, for the figures changes now, and the church has become the bride of Christ. The word church means called out. Here on earth we are the church, the called out ones. But after we leave the earth, we are the bride. Okay. And then verse 5 and 6 says, And the voice came out to the throne, saying, Praise our God for all ye servants, and ye that fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of great multitude, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of almighty thunders saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent, omnipotent reign, reigneth. Pastor McGee's ver uh, he says this, he says, And the voice came out forth from the throne, saying, Give praise to our God. Give praise to our God. All ye his servants, ye that fear him, the small and the great, 
And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as if it were the voice of many waters, and as it were the voice of mighty thunder, saying, Hallelujah, for our Lord our God, the Almighty reigneth. The voice came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God. Notice that we call the praise comes directly from the throne of God, because the Lord Jesus Christ is preparing to take control of the world. This is truly the Hallelujah Chorus, and the most profound paean of praise in the entire Word of God. It takes us all the way back to the covenant which God made with David, in which he promised that he would raise one upon David's throne, who would sit and rule the world. In 2 Samuel chapter 7, verse 16, we read, And in thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee, for thy throne shall be established forever. But before Christ returns to earth, there's going to be a wedding, and you and I as believers will be part of it. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Okay, ready? This is from the book of Leviticus, chapter 22, verse 26 through 30. It says, And the Lord spoke unto Moses, saying, When a bullock or a sheep or a goat is brought forth, then it shall be seven days under the dam. Under the dam. And from the eighth day and henceforth it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire unto the Lord. And whether it be a cow or an EWE, ye shall not kill it with her young both in one day. And ye shall offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord. Offer it at your own will. On the same day it shall be eaten up. Ye shall leave none of it until the morning, for I am the Lord. When an Israeli willingly offered a sacrifice of thanksgiving, it was to be completely eaten on the same day it was offered. Why? First, it was to protect against pollution, against the food becoming spoiled for lack of refrigeration. Second, spiritually, I believe, our thanksgiving can also become spoiled unless offered consistently. Over time, our minds have a way of explaining away God's miraculous hand in any given situation or attribution his goodness in our lives or our own efforts or maybe you might call it luck or you might even call it coincidence and thus our thanksgiving becomes spoiled if not offered immediately constantly and with a whole heart now again guys second i believe that the word was given to us to provide such satiation it is as if the Lord is saying, When you bring me a sacrifice of thanksgiving, I want you to leave with your full belly. I want you to be deeply, deeply satisfied, totally satiated, and completely happy. By him, uh, the book of Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer a sacrifice of praise to God. Continually, that is, the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to, to his name. God wants us to offer the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, not because he needs to be thanked, but because we need to be thankful. Why, says Pastor John Corson, thanksgiving is the antidote to depression, the remedy for a critical spirit. Yes, there are very real battles facing each one of us. We are not to pretend they don't exist, but neither are we to indulge in doubt and self-pity. Rather, we are to do what Josephus did. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 15 and 17 says this, With a confidence of Edomite, Amorite, and the Moabites troops arrayed against him, Josephat, the king of Judah, called unto God for help. God responded through a prophet, saying, Do be not afraid, nor dismayed by the reason of the great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. 
Josephat could have said, What kind of battle plan is this? Instead, he bowed his head and worshipped. Although all he had was a promise the next morning, rather than sending his troops to battle, Josephat sent a choir of praise. And although this made no sense militarily, it, it disoriented, disorientated the enemy that drew their swords in confusion, and they annihilated one another. Uh, see verse 20 through 24. The same thing is true in the spirit. If we, an enemy who surrounds us constantly, an adversary who wants to intimidate and depress us daily, whose goal is to rob us of the riches of our joy and peace, but this enemy, enemy beaten back, confused and overwhelmed through the power of praise and thanksgiving that the Lord gives each one of us born-again believers when we put our faith in God, Walk boldly um, in the things of the Lord and trust Him and, and really, you know, speak um, well about Him. So again, guys, the bride of the Lamb and the marriage supper is tomorrow. Uh, let, us, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to Him for the marriage of the Lamb has come. So tomorrow we'll go into the marriage of the Lamb, the marriage of the Lord. Remember, guys, greater is He who is in me than he who is in the world. Therefore you are great, O Lord God, for there is none like you, nor there is any God besides you, according to all that we have heard with our ears. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope you're encouraged. Um, the book of, again, the book that I'm reading at the end of each message is called The Pillar by Fire by John Corson. Uh, it's the Old Testament. Um, 365 daily meditations from the Pentateuch. Pentateuch. It's the Pentateuch is another name for the first five books of the Bible. So, guys, well, cleanse yourself. Be about the Father's business. Hallelujah. Grow your beard. Get in shape. Lift some weights. And uh, thank the Lord for another day. Um, because whatever He has for us, let us walk boldly um, into what He has. And then... Um, Let me read this to you. You might be encouraged. Okay, seven and eight. Da, 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 Okay, let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him for the marriage of the Lamb has come and his wife has made herself ready. It's not a list of things to do that prepares us for marriage feast. It is the embracing of what the Lamb has done for us. You know, guys, if you haven't been born again, you're not saved. If you haven't received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, you're going to follow the broad road and, and miss the rapture and be deceived and find yourself in the tribulation hour. Nobody wants to be in the tribulation hour. I don't. That's why I was born again uh, 20 years ago in my backyard. So again, guys, um, trust the Lord in all things. Uh, be about the Father's business. Don't forget to read your Bible. Um, you know, get into the habit of praising the Lord. You know, I've been doing that at the gym, not doing more cardio, more and more cardio. Instead of doing weights for an hour and a half, walking for half an hour, weights for an hour and a half, I'm going to do walk for half an hour, weights for an hour, and then finish off with more cardio. Hopefully I get leaner and meaner. And again, guys, by the way, guys, if you watch the news, uh, the food supply is winding down. The supply lines are closing down. There's, the world is shutting down, and most people have no clue. Um, the tribulation hour is gaining speed. Um, Russia and, I, and, and all these countries are sh shutting down the oil supply and bringing prices higher. Um, I don't know why we, as the United States, just don't drill. But again... I think we're being controlled by globalists, elites, big business, big pharma, um, military industrial complex, and they're basically they're buying up all their competition. Remember, they were giving all this money at zero percent interest almost. That's free money, bro. That's free money. And they bought up all their competition, and all they did was buy up all the houses, all the apartments, all the food supplies, all the manufacturing, all the cattle, 
all the cattle, all the farmlands, everything they bought up. And all they did was consolidate and raise the prices on everything. At the same time, telling you it's your fault for global warming. They have no clue that the judgment of God is, up, is coming upon us. And we're about to head into the tribulation hour. And we're about to, again, um, start the Bible story that we were finishing here. Uh, it's going to be started over here in real life. Don't be surprised that you're in a Bible story. It's called the tribulation hour. Um, you'll read about it. The Feast of Revelation, the false prophet, world bank, clashless society, freedom, freedom of speech is gone. Everything's hate speech. Everything really is really against God's word. And then, um, we will not have you reign over us, they tell the Lord. And the Lord is like, too bad. He has the title deed of the earth. You're going to about to get 86, Satanás. Satan, by the way, you're going to go to jail for a thousand years. And I was thinking yesterday, I'm going to finish off here. The United States has been a country for how long? 250 years, maybe? Or less? Now imagine... How long we've been here as a country, but the millennium reign is four times longer than the United States has been a country. We're going to have a great time. We're going to be alive for a thousand years and all eternity. So I don't know. You want eternal life? Give me a million dollars. But in reality, it's free. It's a free gift, guys. Salvation is a free gift. No one can earn it. Jesus, again, did it, died on the cross for us that we can have fellowship with God the Father. And that's what he does. So again, guys, may the Lord bless you. Be girded, be strengthened. Tomorrow we'll go over the bride of the Lamb and the marriage supper. In the nombre de Jesucristo.